Archiving started. Archiving started. Um, so so the, the, the session is being recorded, and then we'll be, when the session is finished, if I remember to press stop archive, and if somebody could remind me to press stop archive, it will be downloadable as an MP4, fairly huge file. Uh, if it goes on for an hour, it'll be about 60 megabytes. Um, but anyway, it, it, it creates an archive. And the idea is that when the classroom or similar technologies provide lightweight, low-cost lecture capture, hello, there's some more people coming in. So hello, oh no, that's the archiver and the encoder. <laughs> <laughs> the archiver and the encoder seem to be characters. <laughs> Uh, Mary, do you have your hand up? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, Hello, Mary, we're here. It was a um, virtual, virtual stretching. stretching. Sorry. Sorry. Virtual stretching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you got lightweight lecture capture, so you can record a session and you can broadcast the session live to other places. And as you see, I've got the webcam turned around, pointing at the room. And I think you're all probably sufficiently pixelated, so you're unrecognizable anyway. Um, but if you wanted a talking head, you know, you can do that kind of thing and get a talking head of the lecturer. And, um, but I didn't want it to be particularly focused on me. So T-Lab, the idea is an informal occasional gathering of people at Brooks who are interested in contemporary learning and teaching practice. And um, we are sort of pushed into learning and teaching, but and, uh, the reason, and I've been saying this several times, the reason I do this job is that, I mean, it's, is it selfish? Is it totally just egoistic? I love teaching, you know? God, I actually get to do a job that's about something that I enjoy doing. So um, I, I like talking about it. I like doing it. Um, and so that's my, that was my confession, really. Um, and because it's T-Lab, we get cake. It'll be changing days. It'll be changing times. It won't always be at our Friday lunchtime. Uh, so there is a, and I don't think, Mary, you won't get this, which is going to be this one. Um, so I created a Google calendar of events, and there is a, at the moment, we're just using the OCSLD blog as a place to post some stuff up. And ah, we're going to be starting a Google group mailing list. So if you want to get into the Google group, um, and then just sign your name if you want. So eventually, will sort of expand the social media presence. Um, uh, I created a Twitter identity called T-Lab Brooks, if anybody happens to use Twitter. Um, and we'll be trying to develop the use of Google Plus Hangout. But at the moment, Brooks's Google environment has not enabled Hangout. So, I would have done this today as a Google Hangout rather than as a rather than as a Wimba classroom event. Anybody that has please raise the tickets. So I have. <laughs> everybody, everybody, please. Yeah. 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 So if everybody, so if everybody goes to service now. Um, shall we do it? <laughs> service now at uh, servicenow.brooks.ac.uk and puts in a request to enable Google Hangouts that might put some pressure on. There, there are advantages to using Google Hangouts, like you can stream lectures straight through YouTube, and um, it's, it's uh, pretty, it, it, it seems to work quite well. It worked well in pilot for this from all of our private. Google Mail accounts, but I don't think there's any point in requiring members of staff to use their outside of work identities to do work stuff. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So there's a calendar. Um, this is the first of our sessions, 1220, welcome to T-Lab Brooks. Uh, 1245, I picked on a topic 
which we may want to talk about, meaningful midterm module feedback, and then um, the where next. And there's a direct link to the Google, uh, to the to the Wimba classroom that this one is being run in. So if anybody was out there and wanted to join in, they could paste that link into the classroom. Um, any any sort of questions, discussions, points at this? Would you all find it useful if we had a quick introduction around the room? Because I know I know most of you. Um, so should we just say quickly hello, who we are, and where we work? Yeah. Um, uh, Neil and OCFLB. Welcome back. Thank I'm here at the I'm a senior lecturer and I'm working in the subject for the support. I'm Francisco Ben, I'm working in the I'm Sandrick. Sandrick, I'm there. Sandrick, I'm completely in communication with the audience. Now I'm right, now I'm coming up to the last one. James Gaynor, I'm from the I'm David from Packers and Business. Greg Dunfield from Manchester Week. Steve Berhoff from London is also working on the radar project. Henry Abanda from the Radar Construction. And Pam Sharp from Health and Business. So, kind of half lecturers and half. Uh, OCS will be an educational development and media workshop stuff, which is really so. Yeah, so what I mean, before I kind of rattle on and say, okay, it's supposed to be informal, it's supposed to be an interest group, um, it seemed to make sense to us to, to put together an initial program. But if I, is it fair of me at this point to say, what do you want out of this? What are you looking for? From, from these events. I want a minute to talk to the person next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you talk to the person next to you and, and what, what are you looking for to get out of these events? <laughs> Do you like finalizing the spelling of tea bags? No. <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. James would like to be out of this event. Final spelling for tea. <laughs> James is less comfortable with a merchant. <laughs> 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 Mary, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because one of the things that you could do is uh, if I let's yeah. see, yeah. Um, you should be able to pick up a text tool, and I think you can. I think you can deface the board, um, and you being, do you have do you have a do you have a set of tools up in the uh, upper left hand corner? Um, I just have a look. I see you. I've written on the board. Written on the board. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Uh, well, yes, you know, I sure is alumni, indeed. Yeah, well, we continue. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't see tools in this, in this screen. Aha. Uh -huh. Abby, uh, would Mary, as a user, would she have the, the 
Ah. At the very bottom of the toolbar, enable. I think they're all enabled. She's enabled. Oh, you're enabled. <laughs> I've got a menu I've with got a menu. Um, um, uh, the video camera, the video camera, telephone, telephone. Yeah. Uh, uh, above, if I move the camera here for a yeah. second yeah. and point it at the screen, there's the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And up in this corner here. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, I don't have that. You don't have that. Is it like a drop down menu or something? Uh, I, Um, I don't, uh, the short answer is, Mary, I don't know. But you could comment in the chat if you wanted to, because I think that's working for you. Yeah, are you getting your yeah. comments? I, I, I responded to you. 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 Ah, excellent. <laughs> Okay. Right. Um, can we just ha having having warmed up a little bit? Any ideas about what you'd like to get out of uh, King Lab at this point? That was a serious point I made before. Yeah. To finalize the spelling. Dane wants to finalize the spelling of King Lab. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It, it's kind of crazy that we haven't decided that we need to write stuff about it and get it out and just yeah. fix the dragon because the option has been uh, there's been for various reasons so certain things have been forced. Um so T E A L A B T Lab is a large media production company in California whose clients are Warner Brothers and Disney and so on. And it felt like if we were going to steal anybody's identity, they would have big lawyers and, uh, and we would be uh, left. I, uh, something for T-Lab. Yeah. I used to work for T-Lab, uh -huh. <laughs> which is in Germany, Dr. Telekom. Uh -huh. So we're allowed for research. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you have problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess so for Twitter, we've chosen uh, the ID T E A L A B B R O O K T Lab Brook okay. um, as being something that was sufficiently unique and yeah. available and, and so on. Um, T hyphen Lab is what I thought we would possibly default to when T E A L A B was not acceptable. And T hyphen Lab is, again, whether you use it was like, look, we're looking for something that would work in a number of different platforms. Mm -hmm. And Twitter doesn't allow hyphens. So T hyphen LAB was, didn't work there, but it seemed to work in Brook. Mm -hmm. And as you see rolling along, I got T dash LAB at brookstudies.uk as an email alias for me. And so I could email messages out from T lab or email messages to T lab and then BCC lots of people. Um, but that, you know, it doesn't work everywhere. Um, I think we're moving back to T-E-A-L-A-B at brooks.ac.uk. And then in public, we're T-Lab Brooks, and internally, we're T-E-A-L-A-B. But... Um, sure, it does but it does underscore. Yeah, and T underscore lab is taken by somebody. Blog who has no followers. <laughs> it's Tariq Lab Blum or something. Yeah, a, a, a person with uh, an inactive Twitter account, but it's taken. Sorry? It's taken. It's taken. It's taken. It's taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it doesn't seem, you know, there's another, there's a t shirt company that's called T Lab. <laughs> Um, and there's a tea company as well. Uh, anyway, I think T E my my preference would be T E A L A B internally and T Lab at Brooks for the mail list and T E and T E A L A B B R O O K E S for outward facing social identity stuff. But is that Yeah, uh, it, it's just we kind of 
need everything confirmed because I think already on this document I'm going up to note this meeting I've started four different ways. Well, just because of the sort of thing that's been said. Who objections to that proposal? <laughs> yeah. 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 Who wants? I thought that James imposes consistency. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just make it right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And so, oh, good. Somebody's defacing the board. Is that you, Greg? Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, communication. The web space is, uh, at the moment, I'm using the OCSLD blog site, and that may be all we need. I, I don't know. Um, with uh, a tag and TLAB, does TLAB need its own website? Probably it will in the fullness of time. Um, uh, there is a Twitter feed, and um, it's got six followers now. I think they're all in this room. <laughs> um, but um, we're, I've requested a Google group from Obis um, a week ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, Google Plus we've talked about. Um, Facebook, they want to set up a Facebook uh, group. I haven't done that. Uh, there is a Moodle course that Abby set up in order to have the, um, the virtual classroom. We may want to develop Moodle resources, but probably a Moodle course is overkill for this kind of informal thing, but there could be uh, a, a rationale for that. Um, at, at the moment, my feeling is a, an email list and a little bit of uh, social media through the OCSLD blog and a Twitter feed is probably all we need right away. And if anybody else wants to leap in there and ramp up the social media stuff, then file. Um, virtual Classroom talked about that. Um, virtual Cake only. Um, again, uh, yeah, principal. I, I think we should be doing this. I think we should be encouraging lecturers to do this. I think increasingly, uh, yesterday at the, uh, the Humanities and Social Sciences faculty, we debated the policy for students recording lecturers, uh, students recording what were described as learning contact sessions, which might be a lecture or it might be a one-to-one -one tutorial and everything in between. And the policy that's being developed is a presumption that recording is okay. And there is some tension felt by some teachers around that, that if the lectures are recorded, that that will significantly impact on their teaching style and there's some discomfort around it, and so watch that discussion. But the, the presumption is moving towards students engaging with their own multimedia-enabled devices, um, you know, these things. And, um, you know, you can't tell if somebody's recording your lecture. I could, you know, you just, you know, and it's done. So I don't, I don't want to, I suggested that the uh, stable door was open and the horse had bolted and there was absolutely no point in trying to sort of put them, you know, put the gas back in the cylinder to mix my metaphors. But uh, some people objected to that quite strongly. They didn't sort of like the idea that they would lose control of their words. Only the lecture that's being recorded Again, part of the part of the problem in the discussion that it, it, it sort of felt to be quite comfortable in a big lecture environment, but in a smaller environment where it's the teacher and the student, the, the discussion will be recorded. Do you have to obtain individual permission from each individual student to record it? And, yeah. and so I, I think it's a complicated area for discussion. I don't want to presume yeah. that. And the way the policy was written makes it okay to record things, 
but not okay to share things. So if you recorded something and sat down and listened to it in your room, you would, with a friend, that would be in violation of the policy. But if you listen to it by yourself, that would be, you know, so anyway. Uh, there may be many. Yeah, there is a desire to encourage that. You know, uh, second language learners, people with uh, dyslexic type um, issues, you know. Yeah, but and simply about recommendation something else tells to us exactly what spot training is. Yeah. So my view is largely that the, the academics need to kind of take control of it through technology like this and get to start using it, um, start to work with it, start to use some of the, you know, force some of the innovations on yourself. I don't know what those might be, but this is an environment which we can play with some of those things. So, you know, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the policy is simply about students using dictaphones to record their own, you know, to be. No, but sharing. You mentioned sharing. Yeah. Something there, slide, you can share stuff. Share stuff. It's not going to get you down the point. Yeah. You put it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, then the policy won't work on this side. Because those people will be able to record for publishing as well. Yeah. Exactly. Presently, it's in the hands of that, which is kind of ruthless. Yeah, so share with the fellow student could mean going on YouTube. And the idea, though, is to say you must be careful about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, the copyright is Yeah. So you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to publish it. You can, okay. you can record it, share it privately. For academic purposes. Um, so I think I think Greg, what the point that Greg made, and I think Chidam is making the same point, is that it, you can't really, it, um, nor would you really want to. But what you need to have in place is a mechanism whereby if something goes wrong and something is shared inappropriately and causes embarrassment, the university will have the appropriate big stick with which to beat somebody with. Yeah. And the university can say, you were not supposed to have done that. And you know you weren't supposed to have done that. And, so there is yeah. and it becomes a disciplinary matter. And yeah, but is it only just hang on, so she done? It yeah. doesn't feel the original policy. Once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. There. It's out there. yeah. And you won't be able to get it back. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. what is being done after? Yeah. And your policy is going to be only student recording what staff say or staff can also record what the student says. And uh, can the student share with another staff what he tells to the um, staff? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a kind of word. <laughs> the policy says that either party has the right to say,
Uh, okay, there's there's a calendar of events, and if I go here, I think it's um, on November 7th. I thought we could focus on flipped classrooms, academic multimedia in the classroom, and online video for teaching in virtual classrooms, and uh, on the 27th, so social media is dead. Long live social media. What are the implications for things like Facebook groups, private and public Facebook groups, um, learning and teaching, those kind of things. And I was going to look to colleagues other than myself to perhaps take an interest in um, framing up some of those. Um, anybody with an interest and experience in flipped teaching is welcome to lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it looking anywhere near? <laughs> Um, anyway, that was – so I think that area is going to be an area that's expanding across higher education generally and is something that we want to uh, take some interest in playing with. Somewhere uh, – I also think that it's going to be another completely different – you know, in, you know on, on the other side of things, there's this movement starting up which is about technology-free spaces. And uh, uh, not not just arising from the whole surveillance thing, but the idea that technology is becoming so ubiquitous, and, everything, you know, ee, 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 ee. Um, and um, there are people interested in instead of building, you know, Wi-Fi enabled social learning spaces, actually building, you know, quiet spaces with no screens in them, and no Wi-Fi in them, and no mobile phones in them and actually going out in the middle of fields and having meetings where, you know, so, so the technology-free learning environment is a, is a parallel movement which might be interesting to have a look at at some point. Um, just turn it off for an hour. That makes no sense. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, toga party. <laughs> um, um, so, Three more meetings, um, where do we go next? But um, I think what we want, what what I was going to do today, and I'm not going to do it quite as, um, we got into a discussion in the PLs group, and then some informal network, and then the faculty AESC in humanities and social sciences. Um, concerned with, on the one hand, the NSF, the National Student Survey, and the National Survey of Student Engagement, NESI. Um, and all of that is thought to be good and useful and, or antithetical, depending on your perspective, but is post hoc. It comes at the end of something, end of modules. And what wasn't being addressed was how do you teach teachers to find out halfway through the lecture or halfway through the module how people are doing? And there is a, I, I don't know if it's a movement exactly, but a number of people in humanities and social sciences, and I'm going to presume further, are interested in what's becoming meaningful midterm module feedback and particularly feedback for teaching and learning. Are you asking your students, have they understood it? What are you, and we've seen a number of um, the same inquiries in the PCTHE that have addressed this. How can, you, how can you get feedback that tells you that, oh my God, they haven't understood every, anything that I've said over the last four weeks, and the next four weeks depend entirely on them having understood that. Oh no, how can I... And, you know, what, what do you do about that? So I was asked by the Humanities and Social Science group to start to put together a resource, and I thought that I would tap the brains in here. And so I'm going to just ask you to take a card, take a card, take a card, take a card. Uh, card, and you go, you know, 
Yeah. I was going to ask people to group up. Can you pass that all back? And it's fairly random. And I've been using card sorts in a number of teaching contexts both as a grouping tool and as a way of stimulating conversation. Um, that's not me. <laughs> it's interesting as <laughs> random. There it is, but this isn't. <laughs> Have I got one for Mary? Have I got one for Mary? Yeah. Or for the seven people that are potentially logging in? <laughs> Francis and Greg. Um, traffic light. Traffic light. Traffic light. Exactly. Whoops. There we go. Traffic light. Um, but I will move on. I think to the next slide. Um, yeah. Um, so these cards I put together. And had we been a bigger group and had we not, you know, been kind of, uh, I might have handed them out and then asked you to find the person with the card. But there's not really enough of us. There are uh, eight cards and I think there's 12 people in the room. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. 12, 14. So, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even get into groups of uh, two in, in, in some cases. So um, I thought... The, the idea is that what you do is you ask people to pick a card, and then you ask them to find the person with the card that's the same as theirs, and then you turn the card over, and on the back of the card, there are some statements, which Mary probably won't be able to read, but Mary, I'll, put, I'll upload the slide. Yeah, no, I can read yeah, that. No, I can read that. Um, so that's the back side of the traffic light. And these are Lovely. techniques. Lovely. These are techniques for gathering feedback either in the middle uh, in the middle of a module after week four or halfway through a day that um, you might want to use. And what I wanted to get out of this group was some discussion about what the advantage is, whichever the card is, whatever the technique might be for you. And again, we're going to do this turn to the person next to you. And you'll either have two of the same cards, which is fine, or have two different cards, in which case similarly is fine. Um, so what are the advantages to you? How might you use this in your context? And then I'm going to ask you to think about other things that you might do with the view that we could gather, because you'll know more about this than I do, other techniques for meaningful midterm module feedback. Um, so the ones that I picked, the eight that I picked, are the one-minute essay, class focus, traffic light, quizzes, Ye old fashioned quizzes, you know, there will be a quiz. Um, it works reasonably well both ways. They, uh, card sort, which we're doing now, paired discussions, again, ye old fashioned, map the module, um, box pops, which is sort of like the paired discussion or the one minute essay, only done where you interview somebody on a smartphone and either post it up to a when the classroom or a Moodle classroom or a YouTube and um, gathering information from people in that way. So, yes, Mary. Oh, ah, Debbie. <laughs> yes, Debbie. Sorry, I, I don't know Matthew. I have yet to do this. Matthew. Matthew Marshall. Marshall. Oh, right. Or Matthew Marshall. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Right, yeah. yeah. PTO. PTO. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we just everyone can speak. Yeah, a collaborative mind map. And you can break, depending on the size of the group, you can get, okay, you six do learning outcomes, you six do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. Yeah, those those kind of things. So, so I let you go for sort of ten minutes and uh, discuss the techniques that are suggested here, and I'll join in with. <laughs> um, but with you, how would you do it in your context? <laughs> There are cars. 
stretches and whether we can draw Mary into the conversation here. And you have to Thank you. Thank you. But you could just do that with anything. You could just give people random stickers with the color. Yeah. You have to have one of each color. Exactly. You can, you can do that. And that, that is, this is, the card short technique is very similar to that, except that it adds a layer of content into the sourcing device. Uh, that, that, I think you do you you marking um you know no it's blue marking yeah um what do you have you got the one minute that stage Jane what do you yeah um the two or three key learning outcomes say session to do with the mind map to be anonymous. Um, did your lecturers ever make you do that? No, because my lecturers were smart enough to know that a group of undergraduates wouldn't do this. So that's you see, that's the next time. You really think that? Okay. 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 That if we did one of these every lecture, then probably. You wouldn't necessarily do it every lecture, right? Unless it's like sort of more secretive. I've given them questions. You'd have to be pretty cunning. You'd have to be like, I've already given them lectures. Let people know that people are going to be more. I'm a bit disappointed to hear that. What's up, Mary? I'm disappointed by what you're saying, Dave. You're saying I really like sharp writing. Um, um, and often we don't know what we think and what we see, what we say. What we say. No, it's good. I'm just not sure you'd be able to convince people to do it. That doesn't mean it won't work when they do it, because it would. And usually the question is sort of put, you know, what were the two key things you learned from today's lecture? And you don't have to sign your name on it. The whole point is for me to know as a teacher whether you all got what I said. I'm not trying to get feedback on your performance. I'm trying to get feedback on my performance so that I can improve my teaching. That's the, that's the spiel. That's the rationale. 
Yeah. Well, no, wait, I, you, you look like you were about to come in. <laughs> yeah. 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 What is it? Yeah. Oh, I see. I mean, there, there, there will always be things that you can't improve, but I think there's something symbolic about saying actually negotiating. Yeah. suggested was, uh, um, if I had understood this lecture, then I would be able to do, and you get a group of students facilitated, four or five people together, you don't, in fast focus, you don't need to reach, I have three different views, the whole point is just to gather them, and say, well, in my group, you know, we all agreed on two of them, but we had, you know, two that we didn't, but these are the three things that we came up with. And so it's sort of like um, the one-minute essay, yeah. but share. Um, and yeah. Um, traffic lights was the one that I drew and that I showed up to Mary. It's a start, start, continue of barriers and enablers. And again, that's something that is so it's really handy, um, should be done often. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a kind of on that. I remember in my little marker, she had a card. Yeah. She had a green and a red card. Yeah. Which was given to the student at the beginning of a lecture. Yeah. So it's very important. Checking understanding, the student has to move. They could show me. She was going to come today. She was going to say she was going to try, by the way. The only problem with doing it that way is it's here to would they actually be honest with them? Where's that sort of public hang up? Yeah. Yeah. This is sort of close to the public process. If you could do it like a sheet. If you felt culturally, yeah, I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't really understand. Yeah. What you could do is you could have the sheet at the end. Go through like each of the main point things, say kind of understand, 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 like a pickle. Yeah. 
Yeah, it yeah. And one of the things that I didn't put on here, which is, is the, the clicker, yeah, which again could be really useful. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just can use the web. Yeah. 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 Okay. Lovely. Yeah. 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 Yes, good idea. Yeah, a student generated quizzes indeed. I like that. Um, okay, everybody, thank you very much for that. Uh, can I can I solicit some feedback from the room? Who's the big Well, I'm having used the card sort of technique, sort of. Um, can I modify it? Um, can I just get some, some sense of how the conversation has gone around around these topics and uh, where it's gone next? Good ideas. We um, get away from completely different programs and fields. So we've got the most common ones to teach research methods. And so a couple of the ideas you can think about how you would use them, something like that. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, focus group, app focus group, uh, which I think if I hear halfway through seems, you know, if I have to explain this to someone else or, you know, putting into the little mini focus group a key question and then yeah. group to. Uh, I like that. If, if I had to teach this to someone else, yeah, I would. I mean, I yeah. That's quite a, that's yeah, it's a nice way of phrasing it. Um, an example of keeping where you want to classify chicken and the sector to the so I was saying, like, you could do a prioritization exercise. You could have a whole list of activities and then get the students to sort them out in the order in which they'd have to do, you know, something yeah. like in their chest, you don't go along and take the temperature test. <laughs> uh, you might, you know, have all the activities in a row and say, sort these out in what order. And that could apply to other fields as well. Yeah. But in healthcare, there's a lot of it. prioritization yeah. exercises. Yeah. Quite, quite nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. However, we have three people charts and talk about how this is interesting and we all do. Within the group three of us, we all have some experience with one or other on the land and stand out here to that how you like this Yeah. So, for each example, I've got a different perspective on the yeah. whole so what I've been asked to do is offer workshops into a faculty around inculcating these kind of ideas as a, not exactly an antidote, but it's something to run along from the plans and the, you know, the, the various the summative post-module feedback, feedback to learning and teaching. Um, and this, in effect, is kind of Achieving and piloting that workshop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. What's that? Well, I was just going to say we, we were we spent a bit of time talking about the mapping the model idea because it's got so much potential to be a different activity depending upon how you frame. Yeah. And you could ask students to map their experience and just let them figure out what they think is important for us using the library or the concepts of the module. Or you can tell them to focus on just the concepts or 
Yeah. 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 I just that's on the whole point of some signet and we were wondering about using Twitter with um hashtag last post or using it in the form you know, instead of post it for content matters matter the software to use Twitter in some way like hashtag so the group would have a particular hashtag and yeah. share and then you would just have them all Mm-hmm. And there's loads of Twitter analytics tools that would then draw them out for yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Although I'm happy if somebody needs to do a workshop on that. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was uh, that was one sort of way that we could use. What I, what I was hoping to do also, kind of using this as an opportunity to show off something else, which is the Teaching Practices website. And I thought that it would be a good use of um, uh, Yeah, the slides are, yeah. I, I, no, I won't email them, but I will put them on SlideShare and I'll send you the link. Yeah. Um, uh, teaching I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so there's a website that Rona and John Bounds built using Tumblr um, that's teaching pra- Brooks teaching practices, and it's so Amy is part of the hundred and hundred and fiftieth anniversary of the university to collect. 150 examples of good teaching practices. And so these are the ones that were shortlisted for the Student Union Teaching Awards. Um, And down here, there's a a hashtag, one of which is, um, where is it? Um, Feedback, feedback, there we go, feedback. Um, And I thought we could populate that, or, or harvest some ideas. Anybody that comes up with ideas, I'm sort of going back out, uh, seeking input to the Brooks Teaching Practices website. I think there's 90, 92 entries in this collection at the moment. Um, and I don't think it has to stop at 150. But I would like to see it become sort of a useful resource, categorized social, um, sort of a, a, a folksonomic categorization of things you might do, and if you were interested in feedback or whatever it might be, you know, academic literature, um, ways of, ways of, it, it, so it's, it's a start in trying to share practice in a kind of an open and self-structured way rather than necessarily, um, you know, following any 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 script that was what i'd like to think about developing that anyway so more ideas post them here tag them feedback um or send them to rona and and she will add them to her backlog and eventually post them um i think we're really on to the um sort of where next? Um, there's two more meetings this semester, which have a bit of an agenda attached to them, just because we felt like we should probably start off with a bit of an agenda. But next semester, the intention will be that we there, there's space in the second semester to have two before Easter and two after Easter, basically. And the um, question being, what do you want to experiment with? Um, and I would like it very much if people in this group and and if this group could grow would take over the agenda and say, you know, I'm interested in visualizers and 
I know Marston Road has just had a lot of whiteboards installed, apparently, and they were a big surprise for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Definitely Mark Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so maybe a session on using whiteboards on down at Marston Road, multicast over. This would be something good to do in the early part of the next semester. Um, we want to use the John Henry Brooks building or the new learning and teaching building or the new library and teaching building as soon as we possibly can um, to try and move these sessions into that. Um, but when it's ready, we'll use it um, and try to um, develop some expertise in using the kit that will be in there rather than the kit that's in here. Um, and I think that is pretty much it, except you will see on your desk there are some posters, and there are three boards up there, T-Lab, Stop, Start, and Continue. And I would value it, and I think those of us that have been trying to organize this would also be interested if you took a few minutes to, you know, um, have put some thoughts down, stick them on the poster before we go. And any? I just want to yeah. share something. When you said Mr. Uh, Mr. Feedback, yeah. I didn't understand that at the beginning, uh, giving feedback to the students that they're learning. I thought about getting feedback from students in a timely manner on our teaching and how the modules run and etc. That is how I had been thinking about okay. it, but I yeah. suppose it does always go both ways. Yeah, so I was thinking that majority of the time, one of the issues that the students bring to me is that the end of semester is too late because they don't feel like they are having their inputs are realized timely. Yeah. So I was maybe a topic to discuss later, how to make sure that the students are heard in a timely manner and that they can, you know, their suggestions are addressed and it's almost just in time teaching. Like yeah. TV basically almost taking their suggestions of content and the way the modules were maybe introduced in the lab in our case, you know, that's the things that they won't see. Yeah. So can we talk about this? This is something that yeah. I, I feel that we are lacking a lot. Yeah. Time. Yeah. In 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 my. I mean, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. As you know, as the, soon as the yeah. short answer is yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then a slightly longer, more complicated question is: Can you get some of your colleagues to come along to these mm -hmm. sessions so that they yeah. engage? The only the only thing is that it's it's almost again the way how things are run. Because you have to have the assessments ready by before the you know exam, exam questions are out there. Everything is so rigidly planned from the beginning, and then once you start running the module and the cohort you have is probably not. It works for another cohort, but the new cohort needs has other special you know other needs that you have to address, and then some flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you introduce that flexibility in module design? Right. <laughs> Quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, but the answer would be let's do a CDI. <laughs> let's do these Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And on the others, I heard you, and I'm going to, you know, extend the deadline for this because it's what we deserve for enough time, and etc. And then also they throw how their answers are with certain questions, so that some of them think a certain way, and some of them think completely opposite way. And then they see the impossibility of the situation too, and they start relating to that. Okay, you know, they always complain that this is, you know, not done. But one moment, I didn't know that half of my group. Otherwise, I think it, indeed it's a hard thing to address for the, yeah. the lecturer. So it can be really hard for the lecturer. Yeah, yeah. can it? Yeah. 
key concerning a point of uh, getting feedback from students and addressing them. Post to let the feedback can continuously have yeah. feedback throughout the year or throughout the semester, and everything positive or even if it's negative, you can still address those, yeah. their concerns. Yeah. But then we need that system to clearly demonstrate to them, mm. give them that clearly address this aspect that you said needed attention or needed some improvement. Now, if you map that to the end of the semester, you realize that, yeah, you can have students saying that, yes, our feedback was considered, our views were considered. But if you give a test or an exam and they don't perform well, do another, uh, get another feedback from the students, they're going to say they're going to give everything negative. <laughs> but this is what they initially said. Okay? So I think it's a question of trying to prove to them uh, that they are concerned or what they actually provide the feedback has been considered. But then even with that, everything ties to the math that they get at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having one actually, because we're looking at program level websites that day, we have stumbled across some courses that are publishing their module uh, reports end of module reports to students. So they're freely available to all students in the program. And I wonder if it's one of you thinking about how that could work. Because one of the things it does is show the current cohort of students that this is public information, it's shared with them, and causes of course seem to have to ask itself the question, how do we address it? Do those module reports over so successive runs indicate that we have listened to what the people are saying? Are there concerns in those module reports that we, the yeah. current board still has? Yeah. Or is it a question for there? So maybe that's a, another thing. Yeah. You know, I, you know. I managed to use the Moodle evaluation because I turned it on quite fairly early and whenever it becomes available I immediately make it available to the students and that saved me but not my module evaluation because it happened before the exam and all of a sudden I got three four very negative um, feedback and he just communicated how scared they are about the exam so I responded by giving more review material pointing out more information <coughs> about you know what they should be concentrating on the exam, and then students came to me informally and saying that like, okay now it's clear <coughs> now we know what's going to happen and you know yeah. thank you for that but that was basically again it is in the system as very negative yeah. review so I even though the lecturer is able to address that it's never able to be you know reiterated by yeah. the students so yeah. Which was the lecture before a big coursework or exam, they kind of left open a bit and gave us the choice whether we wanted to learn something slightly tangential that didn't have the extra information or if we wanted a review session no, okay. on the lecture. And that was kind of the So, plan like 11 classes mm. instead of 12. Yeah. Leave that one before the big seven to sort of speak to the class. Sorry, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Back to the idea of the impact of an unpleasant experience like that. Yeah. Gordon Carroll, I, I, I download and copy it before any of my students ask me that. And so I've got, got all the nice ones. <laughs> and then after the nice ones, yeah. so I should. I, I, um. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can I just? I just want to. I just need to sort of try to be fair about the the time. Happy to stay and carry on the conversation. Mary, if you're still there, thank you very much for uh, participating remotely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to stop the archive now.